So, how do FDM 3D printers work? Well, first off, they use this roll of filament and these types of spools to create 3D printed objects on the bed. So, if you look at this diagram, you'll see that it has the filament on the left side, which then goes up and through the feed mechanism down into the extrusion head, which gets really hot. It melts it down in the printer nozzle and then 3D prints it onto the bed. It's like if you were to take a hot glue gun and incredibly accurately draw a bunch of lines in a nice flat shape and then you lift up and you do another one on top of that. So this is basically a high detail plastic hot glue gun. It's the best way to describe it. So the 3D printed part gets printed on the heated bed, which is sometimes required for prints to stick to the bed. And then there's controls at the bottom. This is one of our mono prices. We have different ones. We have Ender 3s, CraftBots, and a whole bunch of other printers. Uh, however, this is one of the more common ones we have. So this is why the diagram is here. So, types of filaments and their uses. There's not just one roll of plastic. This is what's known as PLA plus, but there are hundreds of different ones out there, but these are the most common ones that are there. First is PLA, which is the one I just showed you. It is called polylactic acid and it is actually technically biodegradable if you do it the right way. So it's very easy to use. It is used on the monoprices, the Ultimakers, the CraftBots, and the Ender 3s, all the ones that we have, and you can use it for anything. However, it is pretty brittle though. So if you were to leave something like this on an edge and it fell, it would probably snap. And it's not heat resistant at all. It warps at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you leave something nice and fragile like this in your car on a hot day, it might end up being like wet spaghetti when you show up the next day or when you go to your car again. So you wanna avoid that. Next is ABS. ABS is one of the more common materials as well. And it's a little harder to use, mainly because it has gases that come off of it that you don't really want to breathe in large amounts. Now, if you print one thing in a room with airflow, you'll be fine. You just don't want to have five 3D printers all printing ABS in a confined space. That's not very good. However, it is very heat resistant. So you can use it for hot lunch boxes, stuff like that, or if you need to make a pipe that's gonna have heat going through it. It's really good for heat resistance. It only starts warping and getting damaged at 100 degrees Celsius, which is a lot hotter than PLA's warping temperature at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. However, uh, it needs to be printed in an enclosed space because it needs to be printed constantly hot. And if you don't, it just won't print very well. If you try to melt a plastic that is heat resistant, you're gonna end up with some questions of how it works. So we don't use ABS that much. If you want to bring a roll of ABS on your own, feel free. Uh, however, we advise you not to use it in the spaces as much because it's just really a pain, honestly. Next, and probably about the second most common and is actually becoming more popular, is PETG. PETG is a material that is about as easy to use as PLA. However, what happens when it prints, if you look at this 3D print may be hard to see. So it prints in layers. And when you have everything print in layers, those are all gonna be weak points. Uh, PETG, the nice thing about it is that when it's printing, the layers will weld together a lot better. And when it breaks, is less likely to break along a printing line, which is a weak point. It's more likely to break in an actual functional way, like a solid part would. So if you ever need to build something that is functional, like a gear mechanism, something that's gonna have a lot of stress, you're gonna wanna print in PETG. So it's really nice. It has a lower heat resistance uh, compared to ABS, but it's a lot more heat resistant than PLA that warps really easily. The printing temperatures for all these, by the way, are all on screen and all on the PowerPoint that you can check on your own if you want to double check on that. So the last one is behind my head. It's TPU. Now this material, this is really cool. So TPU is a material that is actually flexible and you can use it to make flexible pieces. 
So if you look at this, I printed a coaster. Now it looks the same as this, right? However, the cool thing about it is that it can warp and it's really soft and rubbery. And if you print it thinner, you can get a lot more bend out of it. You can make wristbands, you can make a whole bunch of fun stuff with TPU. So the thing about TPU though, is since it's bendy, you can't put them on Bowden tubes. So if we go back to the feed mechanism, this right here, this is what is known as a Bowden tube, meaning that the motor is up here pushing the filament through. And then down here, it's being pushed through the hot end. Why TPU doesn't work is because when it's being pushed up here, it could get bunched up and clogged in this pathway and not make it to the hot end. And whenever it has any resistance on it, it's just not gonna work. So you don't wanna use any of our 3D printers that we have that have Bowden tubes on TPU. So the ones that you can use TPU on are the CraftBots, which are direct drive. Direct drive meaning that the motor is actually mounted to the head. Because then in that case, it would be pushing the material directly into the hot end and it wouldn't be messing anything up. So those are the materials that we have and a lot of them we provide. We provide PLA, PETG, and TPU. So those are the materials you can print with.